Hello everyone, continuing the series of weekly contest 281. Let's shoot for the last question, which is a hard question. It looks hard, but it's not hard. I'm promising you guys, after this video, you'll not find this hard. So without further ado, let's quickly walk through it. Here in this question, we are given an array of integers and an integer value k. What we need to do, we need to identify those pairs i and j such that nums of i into nums of j happens to be divisible by k. Here they have provided with us with an example. I'll be walking through this example as well as the approach to go about it. Why the PPT? So let's quickly start, hop onto the presentation. Let's get started. Count array pair divisible by k, lead code 2183. It's a hard level question on lead code. So let's try and understand it by the same example that was specified. We need to identify those pairs when, which when multiplied are divisible by 2. So let's get started. The first pair that we see is 1 comma 2. 1 comma 2 is divisible by 2. So we got first answer, first pair. Next we see 1 comma 3 is not divisible. 1 comma 4 is divisible where we got the second pair. Next we see is 1 comma 5. It is not divisible. Let's increment uh, to the next starting pointer which is 2. 2 comma 3 will be divisible. So let's write it up. Then we have 2 comma 4. It again will be divisible. Next we have 2 comma 5. Again it will be divisible. Let's proceed ahead. This time we'll start from 3. 3 into 4 will be divisible. 3 into 5 will not be divisible. So let's skip it. Let's start from 4 as a starting index. We only have one pair which is 4 comma 5. So how many pairs in totality have we figured out? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The answer is 7 which is in sync with our expectation. Now anyone out there can write the simple code. The time complexity would be order of n square. Obviously since it's a hard question, order of time complexity of n square will not work. We have to think of something better than this. What is that? Even before jumping onto it, let's look at the mathematical formula which will help us come up with that approach. So in case whenever someone tells you that number 1 into number 2 modulus k happens to be equal to 0, how can we rewrite this equation? It is simple, which is GCD of number 1 comma k into GCD of number 2 comma k. The whole gets a modulus of k. In, if that value happens to be equal to 0, that means it is divisible. So both of these equations are equivalent. And this is the crux of the problem. Trust me, I'll tell you how we can exploit it. But even before uh, diving dive into the actual core algo, Let's quickly try and understand it. Why is this statement true? So let's consider the case where number 1 happens to be 363, number 2 happens to be 91 and the value of k happens to be 21. So let's go by the first approach. What is the first approach? We multiply these two up and divide it uh, and check the modulus by 21. Uh, even before writing and finding out the product, let's find out the factors of 363. What are those? You can represent 363 as 11 square 2 into 3. You can represent 91 as 13 into 7. Now let's find the product of number 1 into number 2. What is that? 11 square into 3 into 13 into 7. Let me just rewrite this once more. So this is the product of nums 1 into nums 2. What do I get? 11 square into 13 into 3 into 7 and what is the value of k that we have the value of k happens to be 21 so let's write the prime factor of it as well so what do we get 3 into 7 now we can see 3 and 7 both are part of the product as a result of which we can say that this value will definitely be divisible by k because both the factors that are present in K are part of our final product. Let's reanalyze the factors of K. We are only interested in those factors of K that are present as part of nums1 and nums2. Remember this point. We are not interested in other factors of nums1 and nums2 that doesn't contribute or are similar with K. So how can we re-represent this product? It's pretty simple and straightforward. Let's look out for the GCD of nums1 comma k. What is nums1? Nums1 is 363. What is the value of k? The value of k happens to be 21. So when I calculate the GCD of these two numbers, what will I get? 
so gcd of this number and this number would be 3 i i'll only get the maximum factors that are common in both these numbers 363 and k which here in this case would turn out to be 3 so this equation will give us 3 let's look out for the second factor what is gcd of nums2 comma k what is nums2 nums2 is 91 it is equal to 13 into 7 and k happens to be equal to 21 which is 3 into 7 so gcd of 91 comma 21 happens to be 7 that means i have figured out the most common factors up till k that are part of nums2 and k that will turn out to be 7 in this case and rest of the factors i'm really not concerned about it it, ha it is there or it is not there i'm not concerned about them i'm only concerned about 3 and 7 so let's calculate its product its product happens to be equal to k that means whenever the gcd of nums1 comma k into gcd of nums2 comma k the whole product happens to be divisible by k which in this case would be 21 is divisible by 21 that simply means that nums1 comma nums2 modulus k happens to be equal to 0 so both these equations are equivalent in nature this is what we have concluded and we will be exploiting this property to actually finally code the solution we will be using the maps technique wherein we will store the unique gcds as key and the frequency the number of times that unique gcd occurs in my map of integer comma integer i have also created my answer variable that will actually store my answer so it's pretty simple and straightforward uh, what do i do i have created a helper method to actually find the gcd of two numbers x and y and let's start the iteration i have created this map and i start the iterating from i equals to zero i is less than nums dot length i calculate the gcd of the current element comma k using the helper method that i have created i got gcd from number one uh, similar to what we discussed in the algorithm as well in the presentation now we want the gcd from number two so i iterate over all the key sets that are present as part of my gcds that will act as the gcd from number two and in case gcd from number one into gcd from number two modulus k happens to be equal to zero then what do i do i add the corresponding frequency of gcd uh, gcd from number two present in my gcd map as part of my answer set and once i'm done with this i simply put back gcds dot put gcds from number one comma gcds from num uh, from uh, number one comma zero as my default value plus one again pretty simple and straightforward no rocket science here in the end once i'm done with this i simply return the answer value so let's try this up accepted this brings me to the end of today's session and with this we have completed all the questions of the weekly contest 281 i hope you enjoyed the entire series if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question but till then goodbye